Hey, hey, after a million years, I posted part two of this tutorial series. I'll be showing you about art meshes, which is, by the way, super important, eye blinking, because this is an eye tutorial, and eyes of jello. I actually don't know what to call it, but this is eye physics. All right, so I'll be showing you a basic understanding of physics as well. Okay, so let's get into that, but I'm also sick, so sorry if I sound like congested. Anyways. Okie dokie, so go select a layer and then click this little button up here for advanced art meshes. Okay, now we're just getting the eraser tool and erasing those four little points at the corners. And now we're going to create our very own meshes. Now just make a bunch of little tiny dots all across your thing. You're welcome for this very detailed explanation. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but just want to explain some things. I'm going to be doing this to everything. You, of course, can just do an auto mesh, though I prefer to edit my own meshes. You can do an auto mesh and then edit it afterwards, but please make sure that all your meshes are closed and then you can also always click auto connect, which connects everything. Mm, very good explanation, Dina. A lot of the tools are pretty self-explanatory, and they're pretty easy to understand. I find that's really important to do this, especially for smaller objects, such as the eyes. Sorry, I sound so weird. So that we can have 100%- <laughs> God, I sound so weird! Good movement! Yes! Slay! I don't find doing this completely necessary for other parts of the body, such as arms and legs, but for smaller things like hair and eyes, it's really important. Oh, it's important to use the parameters that they already made for you. You can, of course, make your own, but just use the ones they made you. So just select all of your eye parts, specifically your pupil, your iris, and your eye shines. Okay, and now we're just making a new deformer. This deformer is called IXY. Now, according to what's on the parameter, we're just moving it left and right. Okay, so in part one, I already explained everything about parameters, so I expect you to already have a basic understanding of what's up. Also, it's really important to make deformers instead of just moving your object. Okay, but we want to clip things, so what you're going to do is, you're going to click Control c and copy your ID of your white eye part. And then, onto your pupil and irises, you're going to paste the clipping ID. I click Invert Mask, uh, not really for a particular reason, it just gives me immediate results. I don't know, maybe my thing's a little buggy because I haven't updated. Alright, so after moving everything up and down, I also sped this up just a little bit because it's pretty pointless to watch me do this. It's also good to deform it a little bit to give it more of a 3D effect. As you can see that. Mm, now that's hot. Okay. And now we are just synthesizing corners. Alrighty, I assume you already know how to do that. If not, then uh, just slow down the video and look at it. Alrighty. I'm just clipping everything else to the eye white, the scalaria or whatever. And then we're going to be slowly moving on to the eyelash. And for the eyelash, we don't use a warp deformer or a rotation deformer or anything like that. All right, and please make sure that you're always on the right parameter. We are going to create a deformer path. So just tapping these on and making little dots whenever they're I just like to make five dots, okay. All right, now after creating some keyforms, I make four, I find it important to do that because when I make the eye like really big, I want that to kind of be a little more subtle. It just helps a lot in the face tracking, okay? So you're also gonna create a deform path for your other eyelashes too. And see, now you just like move it to make it smaller. I usually start with the eyelashes and make sure to make a deformer for everything that you do. Don't actually move your object with your art mesh. Don't, don't do that. Just always use a deformer. Okay. It's, it really prevents making a lot of issues. Okay. Thank you. 
Also, you should separate a lot of your layers. Like, don't attach your eyelid to your eyelash unless you don't mind a little distortion or your eyelid, I wow, eyelid has no details on it. Okay, so now we are creating a new deformer and I'm just making it tiny so it's over the entire eye. What we're going to do now is create a little detail for the X and Y movement of the eye so that things can move a little bit because we want things to be fancy, or at least I do. Okay, so after putting your deformer as you want, go to your hierarchy over here, deformer hierarchy, select whatever you want and then click shift and then if you have any additional things you want to click on, then just control and click. All right, so now you're just going to drag everything into the deformer. See, look at that. You have everything except the eyelash because I messed up. So I'm just dragging it in and boom. And now it has everything. I don't want the um, pupil iris and the eye shines in it though. Okay, so on I, X, and Y, I'm just Xing out that little box so that I can have full control over the deformer only. Okay, I sound like I'm dying, no. Okay, so when the eye goes up, you're going to just deform it a little bit. So that's kind of like pushing the eyelid. See, just, just do that. And then do it for the X too. And then link both of your parameters and then synthesize corners. Just like we did with the pupils and the iris and blah, 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 and everything else. 10 out of 10 explanation, Dino. Great job. So I also made some minor adjustments because I didn't like how the eye shine faded behind uh, the eyelid. So I just made sure to move it around a little bit. We are going to create a new deformer for eye smile. And just like what we did with the other thing, okay? Just make a deformer, make it all small around your eye, select everything and drag it into your deformer, all with the deformer hierarchy. Okay, now with eye smile, I make two key points and then I just make it upturned a tiny bit. Now that I look back at this, however, I probably shouldn't have made it affect the pupil at all because, ugh. All right, now just creating more keyforms, keyframes, whatever you people call it. I am moving the eyelash now, and just a little bit, making a very subtle movement, just so it can be a little upturn, like, oh look, she's happy, haha. <laughs> so yeah, isn't that great? Mm. I'll, I'll shut up now. Joke's on you, I never shut up. So a lot of what Live 2D is, is just a lot of adjusting, a lot of tiny adjustments. And it's pretty tedious work, but it's really rewarding to see in the ending. Okay, so be patient, and if you ever need a break, take one. Because Live 2D is a pain in the ass. Okay, click the three lines, settings for eye blink and lip sync. And then just select your eye blinking parameters which is IR open, IL open, okay? I'm a bit blind, so this took me just a tiny bit, okay? Uh, and then after you're done, just click okay. Go down to physics, and now you can see that it actually blinks. Now we're going to actually do physics. Okay, so click shine two physics. That's shine two because I have two shines. Now I'm just creating my own parameters, calling shine two x y, which I shouldn't have called it that. I should have called it shine two x, or shine two y. Then I click shine round two because I apparently can't spell. No, I didn't mean round because it's going around. I can't spell. I just have really bad memory. So now I'm just moving things. All right, so x is left and right, y is ups and down. So, so in the physics, you're going to want to click add and then name it whatever you want. I call it shine. 
2. And then I put head input. You can choose a preset. I usually just like to choose hair or clothes light. Alright, and then we are going to go over to output settings. After adding a second pendulum, output settings, then select all your parameters, which is eye shine. And then I click increase output. My voice, my voice, no. And then I click yes. And then my phone crashed. I mean, laptop crashed. And then you can see it didn't do anything. And I was like, hmm, why? That's because you have to go to input settings and then change all of these, just delete all of them. You can keep angle if you want, but I decided to delete all the bodies and then go to IR open, IL open, and then you also have to change the effect and make the numbers just a little bit higher. And then you can see when it blinks, <gasps> perfect. Now there's a little bit of shine. Now I'm just going to go here and adjust things. All right, it's a lot of just messing around with the buttons and the settings. So just do that. Oh my God, my voice. Now I'm just going to speed through doing some other things. But while I do this, I'm actually going to explain the positions of what exactly I do. Okay, so for X, I usually like to make one side make the thing thick and one make it thinner. And then for Y, I like to stretch it out in terms of, you know, Y direction, which is up and down. All right. And then when you link those two and then you synthesize corners, it creates this nice kind of like jello-y effect. All right. So that's that. Also, maybe making a video when I was, when I am sick isn't really the best idea. So you could kind of see really quickly what I'm doing, but just for the sake of you guys and because I realized after I did the voiceover for this video that I didn't really edit this super well, I am going to put a little thing on the screen. Wow, look, a thing on the screen for you. For you, my babies. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Now look at that eye jello jiggle. Alright, though, you want to kind of mess around with the settings, and oh my god, and more isn't always better, okay? So, a subtle effect is better, kind of. So we're going lash XY, we're going to create a new parameter and call it eyelash X, and then we're also going to create another one after I find my eyelash parameter and move it. And then create another one called eyelash Y. So, creating little green dots, keyframes, keyforms, whatever you people call it. I'm so professional. Now I'm just moving one end a little more. And I was just messing around with the eyelash, don't mind me. So, I make one like a little bit up. And then I make the other end go a little bit down. As you can see, one's up, one's down. Easy peasy. All right. And then I just use the lasso tool and select the edges of the eyelash. Because on the edge is where you want to see more of that jiggle jiggle. All right. And then on the Y parameter, which I didn't have to call them X and Y, I just go and make the end more jiggly. And then when I combine both of them, link the two parameters, then it'll be beautiful. Though in all honesty, I kind of forgot what I was doing. All right, so I did look up tutorials and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So then with the smaller eyelash, which I assume most of you don't have smaller eyelashes, I just created two parameters, one deformer. Again, it's a repetitive process. I make one have a large movement of the entire eyelash moving up and down, and then the second parameter is just the end moving up and down. So it will create this nice kind of wavy jiggle effect, alright? Especially if you have two pendulums, which is in the physics. They're kind of like these, it just, 
it's just physics, okay? Shh. Moving on, we do the same thing. Well, not really the same. It's a lot more subtle with the side lash. Though, one important thing, because I noticed I did this really badly when I first started, I always thought the more the better, but actually less is pretty good. Alright, so we're just doing the same things with the physics and it's just a lot of messing around. Or maybe that's just how I learn is messing with things. Also, for a nice smooth jiggly movement, try to have different pendulums assigned to your X and Y movement of your eyelashes. And we are done! I am sick, so I am sorry. <laughs> I keep trying to hide my coughs. Alright, thank you so much for watching.